Uh, I would request everyone to kindly switch on the cameras so that we can have a healthy discussion. A very warm welcome to everyone and happy Republic Day. In today's masterclass, we'll be cracking the code to interview skills. So somewhere I had heard long back that interview is just like going for a date. You need to be ready and you need to make a good impression out there. So today we have an eminent speaker on board uh, with decades of industry experience. Hello, Mr. Modgill, glad to have you on board today. Thank you, Manvi. Good evening and a very happy Republic Day to you. Thank you so much. Uh, Are you able to hear me? Is my Mr. audio Mordgil. okay? Is my video okay? Yes, yes. Perfect. So, Mr. Modgill, many of us struggle when we have to prepare for our interview because we want to be best, as I said, and we don't want to end up making any mistake. So for today's uh, format, we'll be going about as I'll be asking you a few questions and later on, we'll take live questions from the audiences. So before that, anything you want to say to the audience? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely evening and it's good to be here. I thought I'll also prepare a few slides. <laughs> so I have prepared a few slides uh, and I thought we could have conversation on three things. One of course is, uh, in my view, which are the most critical things for an MBA interview for admission. And secondly, I'm sure you have questions as the moderator and host for the session. And the third part could be that we could go ahead with Q and A from the audience, which is invited here, the guests here who are all preparing for their MBA admissions for 2021. Uh, will that work for you, Manvi? Yes, definitely. Even I was looking forward for the same. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, folks, uh, welcome to this lovely evening. Um, and I'm glad that you've been able to spare your time. We kept it for 26th of uh, January evening, because we felt this is the time that most of you would be home and not have any distractions around us. So this is my brief background. I have been uh, a corporate guy. I've worked for many, many brands that you can see on your right hand side. I was head of uh, Microsoft marketing for India. I've held India marketing head for positions for MSN, Hotmail, Bing, and Skype. I have built products at Oracle. I've been with NIIT. And Octane.in was one of my three startup ventures, which I have exited successfully. So uh, my, my career, professional career, oscillates between working for large companies in decent roles and also uh, between starting up as an entrepreneur. That's been my background. And why is it relevant to you? Because uh, what I'm going to share with you are my experiences of being one a college recruiter. I have hired from MBA schools for my company. I've also been on the interview board of many B schools in India. So typically, what are the questions you will get from an interview board? I've been privy to this on the other side. And also, if you look at my other part, which is my personal space, if you look at the logos called San Francisco, London, Delhi, Bangalore, and Rachi, these are the places I grew up in or I, I worked in professionally. So I've spent close to five years in the San Francisco Bay Area working there. I've been to London. I worked in London, stayed there for three years, working for a large company, Allied Worldwide, and then doing my own startup. I was born in Delhi and I grew up in Delhi and Ranchi. That's why you also see Ranchi. But I also worked in Delhi for a few years. I'm based out of Gurgaon right now. I'm coming to you live from Gurgaon. Uh, Bangalore is also where I have worked for a few years and Ranchi is where I grew up my initial education. And if there's one thing you want to remember about Puneet Modgil, it is the association with Dhoni. We, we come from the same school and uh, DAV Johar Vidya Mandir Shamli, to be precise. You may have seen this in the Dhoni, the movie MSD and also this campus. And also we both share the same cricket coach. Uh, don't ask me where is my cricket career and where is Dhoni? Of course, you know the, the answer. So today I, I plan to share with you some of these experiences I have had uh, being on the other side and uh, be open to your uh, you know, questions to make this fruitful for your MBA journey. But I thought before we go there, let me just share with you a bit about MBA Spark. Why are we here? What does it mean? 
I see some familiar faces who are from MBS Park. So for them, this will be a recap. But I thought I'll just set in context what MBS Park is all about. Then we go into just one slide, which is about my top bullet points for you for MBA admissions interview, but also any interview process you're going through largely. But I'll make it specific to MBA admissions also. Then, of course, Manvi's questions as a host for the session, this lovely evening. And then we come to your student Q&A. A quick backgrounder. MBS Park started last year, August, and we want to create a space, a work group, a study group for first year MBA students. I have researched, I have learned about the space, and I have come to this realization that the first six months of your MBA program are very, very important for your uh, employability and industry readiness. Uh, a big difference between top 50 B schools and the not top 50 business schools in India is also how they shape you up in the first six months of your full-time MBA program. I'm talking about a two-year two full-time MBA program in the campus. So MBA Spark started uh, as a journey to help students of the first year MBA program get those skills which are important for them to be employment ready and to be internship ready end of year one. Idea was if they have this awareness upfront in the first six months, then they can be more useful in their own journey in terms of being employment ready. Uh, we started in August 2020, as I shared with you. It's one of the only programs in India that started for only first year MBA students. And uh, it's essentially built around the employment readiness or the industry readiness. So it features conversations which are not academic in nature, but how they're relevant to the industry. Uh, we have a program called Success Essentials 4.0 and MBS Park community last year was only by invitation and completely free. Uh, this year, I, we may make some changes for August, uh, July 2021 for the new batch, but that's it. That's it. That's what it was. We uh, attracted a diversity of students from uh, first year MBA colleges. So that's the only common link, but we had trucker and poets and yoga teachers and folks who had worked for HUL. Army, armed forces background from Mysore, Bengaluru. So diversity of uh, students, first year MBA students from 100 plus campuses in India. So that made us, uh, made our group very, very enriching and very diverse. But all of them, first year, full-time uh, MBA students from um, a two-year program. These are some of the campuses from where we attracted these first year MBA students. And we held our MBA Spark Sunday business class lectures. So a good campus uh, uh, sort of a mix between top tier one, two, three, four. And that's what made this group journey very exciting. How, how did we do in the first season? This is the net promoter score, which essentially tells you the customer satisfaction levels of our Sparkies as we call them who attended our MBS Spark first season. So we are tracking at 90 out of 100, which is uh, pretty, uh, uh, pretty good. And that's, uh, that's all the thanks to all the support we received from the first year MBA students. This is a NPS score, net promoter score. And this is where we were tracking for the first season. Uh, what all did we do to create such a high engagement? We didn't go the academic route. We made it very lively, interactive, not many slides, but a lot of interaction for uh, quality Q and A. Usually when you attend an online lecture like this, you will have very little time left for an interaction with the speaker. Um, later on, but that's what we changed in a format. I'll not bore you to uh, death with details. You can go to mbspark.com on this one and get to know. But what we did was we did some fun activities also. We must have uh, held contests with more than 50 books uh, gifted to various students, various little contests we ran. And we very importantly, we featured industry thought leaders. So we had in totality 17 sessions out of which I believe eight sessions or seven sessions featured external speakers to get their perspective. So instead of just one or two faculty, we invited various folks who are practitioners of management of different disciplines to come and talk about their journeys um, and what would they recommend to a first year MBA student. Uh, this was held every Sunday for 90 minutes and more details you can see on the list of these speakers uh, for last season on mbspark.com. This is the brief journey for first year India MBA students. And I would love many of you, when you join the MBA program, it doesn't matter which campus you go to, you can still join this MBA Spark second season, which will start from July onwards. And Manvi can 
share with you more details. So that's the MBS Spark journey. Now comes the second part, which was about, uh, I'm sure you have questions on MBS Spark. We can also take them in the session later, but this is briefly what MBS Spark group is all about. Now we'll go into the first part out of the three for what we are here today for, which is how to prepare for MBA admissions interview. So these are my top three tips. Yeah, this is the time you wanna take notes if you have a piece of paper and a pen or maybe do a screen grab. And by the way, whatever we are discussing today, you can share it on social without a permission. You can tag us if you feel like MBS part. You can tell your friends if you like it, if you find this useful. And this will be a series of lectures um, uh, for held by MBS Park for first year MBA students, like uh, first year wannabe students uh, starting this June for you. I already see a few Sparkies also joining this uh, lecture because they also want to spruce up their interview skills for internships. They're already in the first year of MBA going to second year this summer. But many of you will be joining us uh, this summer into different B-School campuses. And this is where we would love you to join us at MBS Park as part of your journey. More and more details will follow. But these are the top three steps. So let me take them through, take you through each one of them. And I'm happy to respond to your questions, post Manvi's questions to me today. So top three tips for preparing for MBA admissions interview. Number one, prepare as if you're preparing for a job. I know many of you have qualified for admissions to a good campus. You may have done your bachelor's in engineering from one of the fabulous campuses or a bachelor's in commerce, arts, or a BBA from a good campus. Uh, but this is a different interview. MBA admissions interview is more like a, a, your sort of a job interview than a typical academic interview that you've gone through as part of your admission process to BTEC or a BBA or BCom. Okay? So what is that one thing campuses are looking for? Very simple. Can we train this person? Can we groom this person? So this person can be employable in the industry. If we take this person on board, does this person have the raw material to be job ready? So MBA schools will put a filter to see, are you purely, purely academic or do you have the raw material which makes you ready for becoming job ready? Uh, we can discuss this in more detail uh, in the follow-up follow questions, but that's the one thing. So prepare for it as if you're preparing for a job interview and not an academic admissions interview. Uh, the second one is again common to a job interview or an academic interview for an MBA, which is attitude, aptitude, and altitude, the three A's. In fact, we did a session on this in our MBA Spark series. We featured a top-notch industry recruiter, a person with 25 years of experience. And this is also what we discuss in detail. So let me take you through what attitude is versus what aptitude is and versus what altitude is. Uh, attitude is something inside of you. Nobody can force fit. Nobody can change that for you. Uh, are you proactive? Are you confident? Do you have active habits? Those are things which are called attitudinal uh, uh, sort of uh, skills you have or attitude. Attitude is one of the in, in, inside out skill that you have. So we look for how positive is the attitude. That's, that's one way to look at it. So attitude is more inside. Most campuses cannot change your attitude. So hence they look for a core attitude, which is being proactive, proactive, confident, sort of you know, positive, bright, are you that kind of a person. The second and third is where the campuses can do a lot more with you. And that's the part we should discuss now, which is aptitude and altitude. When I say aptitude, it is willingness to learn, learn new skills, learn from failures, so how curious you are, how hungry you are. Have you demonstrated areas where you've gone into some subject not knowing anything and you've delivered something out of it? So which are those um, inherent traits you have shown which are part of aptitude? Aptitude is different from attitude. Attitude, you're born with. Aptitude, you demonstrate very differently. So learnability, how fast can you unlearn and how fast can you learn? So that's the aptitude part. Then comes the altitude, meaning we take you at level one in our program. How fast can you scale? 
how, what is the scalability how fast can you grow and uh, are you a long term player are you a short tempered uh, very little appetite or do you have long stamina do you have tenacity what we call as grit factor are you a fighter will you will you fight and not give up or will you give up very fast so altitude is can we take this person x and will this person do well long term in the career will they scale will their progress be sustainable so three a's attitude aptitude and altitude aptitude and altitude is where a lot of us can make a difference to you but essentially all three are inherent skills in you but attitude nobody can change but if you have the right aptitude and right sort of uh, curiosity for altitude we can make a difference so these three a's is what they're looking for um, any uh, interview but more specifically in the mba interview because the colleges don't want don't want to have folks on board mba students on board on which the college campuses have to work really hard so if you have decent quant skills they can help you become better but if you have almost zero quant skills or very little of qualitative skills you're looking for they will have a tough time of course you're paying a fees to most campuses so they they also look at you as a commercial opportunity but they also want to get students who are already driven who already have these three a's as part of their sort of current personality now comes the last part but not the least part this is the one where i would like you to put lot more effort when you prepare for your mba interviews questions like tell me more about yourself where do you see yourself in 5 years there are a lot of questions they'll ask you and they're looking for your true story so it's very easy for us to google you know it's on our smartphones it's on our voice interfaces so a lot of the questions uh, that they'll ask are very repetitive questions i would encourage each one of you to reflect back if you're going for mba admissions this year you already have at least 20 years of life history behind you i know you're getting old so reflect back in those instances which made you what you are your values and we can discuss this in more details in the q and a later but define your true story what you stand for what are the life's lessons where did you fail what did you learn from it because that's what gives them an indication of your true potential essentially an mba admissions interview is not to do a check mark on all the questions and answers you've given but to see your potential as a as a as a candidate and most importantly who you are not not all of us are same and the mistake you don't want to make is sound as if you are like everybody else so this is my last point but a very important point please be very very specific to who you are try to personalize a lot of the answers to the questions to your journey your mistakes all of you have in a way very similar backgrounds but in many ways a very diverse background and i can say this with some confidence because i have worked with many students like you mba aspirants and also folks who are in mba i've been going to many b schools across india i didn't mention this in my earlier introduction since 2003 2004 so there is a level of awareness i have in mba journeys and also the quality of students we get in campuses it's changed drastically the challenges are very different in 2021 but one has kept sort of ahead of what ch- changes and challenges are so being genuinely your answers being genuinely being about be able to articulate your story success failure both is more likely there will be questions which are trick questions situational aware questions and those questions are questions not looking for the right answer i'm sure you can do a google interview search on google or microsoft interview search on google there are very very big questions on situational awareness so that's those are top 3 tips for you one is prepare as if you're preparing for a job the third the second one is attitude aptitude and altitude demonstrate examples of where you are different from others but least last but not the least articulate your own story who you are true story authentic you do not try to fake it you, you know if you are appearing for your second third fourth fifth interview we on the other side are in, uh, appearing for our 100th or 200th interview or 
500 interviews, right? So we, we can sense who you are, who you're not. So idea is to be honest and authentic and being authentic is better than being correct or ideal. Being authentic is better than being, you know, this is the most perfect. We're not looking for perfect. So with that, now let me, I've summarized the slide for you. Top three tips is prepare as if you're preparing for an interview, altitude, attitude, aptitude, demonstrate that those qualities in your um, interview. And the third one is your true story. Nobody can take it away from you. Do not copy and paste responses from other interviews. Try to reason out your own response. Do a lot of mock interviews between now and your actual interview and learn from each interview that you do and the mistakes you make. But most importantly, uh, articulate who you're not. That's very important as well. Now with this, let me come back to a second part of our session today, which is uh, typical questions. So over to you, Manvi, and now I'll switch off the slides so we can make this more sort of interactive face-to-face -face time between all of us. Back Thank to you, Manvi. You, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Modgil, for those three A's. They were really helpful. And all the other tips that you shared with us along with your experience. So Mr. Modgil, I recently ran a quiz on LinkedIn asking what people usually find it difficult to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. So some of the questions that I got were, and even our, our fellow students wrote that how to address the common questions in a unique manner, which makes us different from others. Your question is, how do we answer common questions that are asked to MBA aspirants in a unique way? I answered that actually by my third point of the top three skills or top three tips uh, rather. Uh, be yourself. What is your story? Uh, if they ask you, why do you want to do an MBA? Uh, are you cut, copy, paste answers from others? Or have you spent some time figuring out what your answer is? So I would say the best way to stand out for common questions is two ways. One, try to approach the question differently. And secondly, have your own story to that question, your own unique story. But you will say, Puneeji, abhi toh aapne ek pehla element aur add kar diya. How do you address that question? So I'll, I'll tell you how. And some of you have already addressed, uh, attended some of my sessions on interviews. So this may come as a repetitive uh, knowledge to you. When somebody says to you, tell me about yourself, they want you to articulate your story, but you can also ask them, I'm 21 years of age. I have done my BCom last year. I'm preparing for my MBA. And I, you know, I have so much to share. Is there anything specific you would like to know in my profile? Now, this is a very different way. So how you handle the question, if you're not sure about the question, you could start by saying, uh, let me see if I understand your question correctly you would like to know more about my overall background or academics. So one is how you handle that question. And the second is the response you give, which is your authentic response, your own true self. So that's in my way, a best way to answer very repetitive, boring questions, common questions. That's a pretty cool answer to just uh, throw up the limelight to the interviewer itself. Uh, I just wanted to know, am I audible? We can hear you. What's your next question, Manvi? Yes, yes, Mr. Modgill. The next question is, how do we define our weaknesses? Like we don't want to know our recruiter to know about our weaknesses. So how we handle that question? When an interviewer asks you a question about your weaknesses, there are two things they're trying to learn about you. One is, are you a person who does self-reflection? Are you a person who looks back your you know recent transactions and figures out what I did wrong or what I did right? Or are you completely oblivious to that? So that's one part where are you self-critical? And if you're self-critical, how self-critical are you? Are you beating yourself for everything you did right or wrong? Or are you reasonably good? Most of us, confident variety types, type A, do not know our weaknesses, have not reflected on our weaknesses. So if you ask, and I, this is a common question I've asked many candidates in an interview. And we all know our strengths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
when you ask them to list their weaknesses, they have not reflected back uh, or they're not willing to share. So that's the first part, understanding what your weaknesses are, making sort of, you know, addressing them. That's one. But the second part is that they're willing to learn from you. How have you addressed those weaknesses? What have you done to address those weaknesses? So for example, one of my weaknesses, and I've often talked about it, is I'm not very good with numbers. I have run companies, I'm a CXO level person, so I should know numbers very well. I do, but I still cannot read a balance sheet. So what I've done is instead of trying to learn how to do financial accounting, balance sheet ratios, I've hired good people who understand balance sheets or I've had friends who are able to help me. So what they're looking for is one, do you, are you able to articulate your weaknesses? And they can be personal and professional. So when somebody asks me, what are your weaknesses? I'll say, look, I do not understand numbers. Uh, but if you ask my mom what my weaknesses are, she'll tell you I'm, I'm a spendthrift. I spend a lot of money uh, that, you know, I, I can be like this often. So, you know, those are good things to talk about. The fact that you can't get up in the morning can be a weakness for some, can be a strength for some. So, so one, are you reflective? Are you self-critical? Do you understand your weaknesses? And the second is, what have you learned from them or how do you plan to mitigate them? Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mr. Modji, for that answer. Like, uh, It's actually a good point to say that, yes, I am unable to get up in the morning and that's my weakness. Just own it. So yeah, you can have you can have fun way of you know creating some laughter. Or you can say, I have a weakness for chocolates or ice creams too at two o'clock in the morning. I mean, you know, this is also a very leading question. Most people can say, oh, weakness, bata dunga, to kya hoga? Mera hiring nahi hoga. right? You can also play fun. <laughs> Saying I'm known in my family to steal, uh, to raid the fridge at night at two o'clock in the morning. Is that a weakness? Absolutely. <laughs> but is that a fun weakness? Yeah, you can have a lighthearted moment. The problem is when it's the interview, we all like, Ab kya hoga, right? That doesn't work. Indeed, it doesn't work. <laughs> Saying from experience. <laughs> so Mr. Modgill, my next question is that, why should we select you when often our recruiters ask us that why should we select you and why you have applied for this company what should be an ideal answer like how it should look like yeah this is, that's a great question so for example you may be applying to five campuses and uh, five campuses have called you for an interview so they will say why should i am sirmore select you or why should mdi select you uh Again, two levels of response. One is, have you done your research on what is the hiring profile of MDI or IM Sirmaur or vSchool or any of these campuses? So idea is to relate your, uh, st uh, your response to their profile. So for example, if you know, if you're a woman student applying for an MBA and if you feel that historically that IM did not have a good ratio of you know, gender inclusion, you can talk about it saying, look, I know that I'm applying to a campus which may not have had a great gender ratio, but perhaps that's one of the reasons I would love to come here and see if I can make a difference. So there are many ways you can say, look, I love the quant bias of this campus and I'm a numbers driven person. Or you can say, I know you have a quant bias and I'm not a numbers person. <laughs> so I would love to learn. So one is to relate uh, to the campus uh, and how uh, they're different and how they're good. So highlight the strength of the campus as you know it based on your research. So that's the one part. And the second one is why should they hire you? Because you are the right candidate, because you have the right aptitude, attitude, and uh, you, you can go for higher altitude. So those are three things I would highlight. I would say, look, I believe you should hire me because I'm unique and here is the reason why I'm unique. Uh, well, why should I consider you, your campus? You have to tell me a little bit more because I only know from what I've read. So there, are, there is a two level of response. One is a very polite, nice student, good student response, which I've said in the first time. Uh, the second one is also a challenging response back. You could say, these are my answers, but you know what? I would also love to learn from you why I should, I should consider I am Sirmore as my campus. It changes the interview completely. So it depends on how confident you are. I see Rashi Pahawa and Rashi can definitely take, take this question back interacting with her a few times, she can absolutely ask this question back to the campus admissions process and say, but tell me also, you know, why should I select I am Sirmore from all the interviews I've got? 
it changes the game completely look every question they ask you is not a firing range and you are on the receiving end you also have the option to respond and perhaps ask a question back in a very polite way so uh, this uh, you have already summed up my next question i was about to ask you that should we end up asking questions in our interview because it may sometimes sound weird or not impressive that we are asking the college or the company that is recruiting us so what should we do so manvi for this interview session that we are doing today with so many participants and i'm sure a lot more will watch this later on repeat uh, you know playback there's no right or wrong approach to any any interview i'm just sharing with you what works for me or what i've seen work around me so disclaimers apply right i believe personally that i love interviews where the candidate in this case mba student or even a job aspirant can ask me a question back so you have to judge by the formality of the interview that you're going through if it's a very stiff upper lip you know no body no body language very stiff body language very formal you may want to just see if it's possible but if the interview is more like a conversation where there's a lot of back and forth happening absolutely but i would urge for you to definitely explore if you can ask that question like for example just now we discussed uh the person asked me the interviewer asked me why should we hire you in our campus why should we have you on board i responded and then i said you know what i would also love to know from you why should i look at i am sir more differently i've read about you but some of my assumptions may not be accurate so i've created i've tried to create an opening for a question so you can actually suss it out when you want to do something which you know your parents will may not agree they may disagree violently you try to put a soft ball, soft ball no soft volley saying ha dekhe mood kya hai bhi <laughs> and then based on the response you change your approach completely right um so that that may be the that may be the way to work uh, but again let me tell you a story a young lawyer went to a a senior lawyer and as and he said i have heard that you are very successful so and i've heard that you are a you know you 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 whenever you've taken witnesses to court they end up saying all the right things that you want them to say in the interrogation in the court room when you interrogate this is very simple when i ask a question i count 10 and the answer comes back from the witness who i'm cross questioning so the young lawyer gets very inspired so the next time he goes into the court room and he has a witness for cross examining in the box he asks a question and starts counting loudly 1 2 3 4 5 <laughs> so you know where it went right so a lot of this depends on your own personal style uh, for me an interview is a two way process it may be 80% one way but 20% the other way also so i would urge you guys because we are in 2021 the style of interviews are becoming more conversational those formal interviews are a thing of the past and also you are a young millennials you are in your 20s we expect you to be high energy and bubbly and short attention span those stereotypes apply you can get away with <laughs> asking back some questions back because that's part of your innate uh stereotypical personality these these days so that's okay you are a rebel because of a certain age group and you have energy so that's good for you to ask question how you ask question is equally important so be very polite and humble never take for granted that because it's an interview and puneet said it's a two way conversation they are obliged to answer to your question even in a job interview and in many ways the mba interview is a, is a little subtle interview if you ask me in mba interview you're also a student you're also a customer by the way <laughs> you will be paying them money there's a buyer consumer relationship isn't it buyer seller relationship in a job interview that's not the case in job interview is much more, one more directional i would encourage you to ask question but ask a polite humble respectable question not the the tone of your question is very important remember the example of lawyer <laughs> 1 to 10 uh, how you perfected his mock interviews but you can ask questions absolutely in <laughs> fact that goes a long way especially for roles which want you to be communicative uh, in communication uh, i i would urge you to 
definitely ask questions. In fact, if I'm hiring for a sales role, jobs or marketing roles, and if you don't ask me a question back without I asking you, ask me a question back, then I would rate you lower compared to somebody else who's willing to ask me a question. That's indeed a cool fact that you shared with us that it's okay to ask questions. Coming along, coming along the next question is uh, sometimes we have gaps, like we take a study gap or a year break, or even if we talk about job, we have some gaps in our resume written. So how should we answer the question when uh, the interviewer asks us that, why do you have a gap in your resume? Or why did you take a gap from your 12th to your graduation and so on? There would be a reason why you've taken the gap. There must be a reason you you tried to do better next year for your prep. You couldn't find a job. There could be many, many valid reasons. I'm not, I cannot speculate on what a reason would somebody have. <coughs> Excuse me. But a genuine, honest answer is the best approach. Don't try to hide it. Look, whatever had to happen because of your academic scores in CAT has already happened. Now the interview process is a filtering process to find out who you are. How do you articulate? You can actually take some creative license, not lie, but you can be softer, be humble, but it's good to be genuinely honest. And for example, many a times when I've hired for sales role, I've asked the person, why did you leave that company? He says, I could not meet my quota. And that's fair because if you expect a salesperson who's worked for 10 years, who's worked for three jobs, three different companies, no salesperson can meet monthly over month quota, right? So sometimes actually it may sort of wake up the interviewer that you can be so direct about it. But if you've taken a gap year to travel around India and do a blogging, if you've taken a gap year to help your parents for, a, for their business, uh, if you've taken a gap year to just work in a company before you decide, there's no wrong answer. It's your journey. As long as you stand still confident for that journey. And if you've learned something from that journey, I think that's very important. Did you make a mistake? Then what did you learn from it? If you didn't make a mistake with that gap year, but you genuinely had a good reason, that's fair enough, right? Like one of Indeed. the MBA students told me, I did not join last year because my elder brother was going through some financial crisis and my family said, you, have, you can, can you join next year, please? Now, what's wrong about it? Does it mean that their parents and their family is very poor? Yeah, all of us can have similar situations. That's fair, no? When I asked a gentleman, why do you want to do your MBA right after your graduation? Why don't you go and work for a couple of years? You've just done your bachelor's from Dehradun and you want to go to Pune and do a two-year MBA. You know what the answer he gave me? Very honest answer. He says, because we also asked that question, why aren't you taking a couple of years to work and then come to an MBA program? So he said, my dad has told me he retires next year from his bank job. So being a branch manager in a bank, I think he can afford salaries for next 12 to 18 months easily. Then, you know, once his retirement starts, then probably we'll have a challenge. And I didn't ask him about the challenge in getting a bank loan or whatever, but genuine answer, right? So never be afraid of what you've gone through as long as you can take them through that part. Uh, one of them told me in an interview that I used to work for a large IT company and I did not get along very well with the manager. So that, that's why I left and I said, let me prepare for an MBA. Now, this could be a red flag. Um, so you got to be careful about, you know, finding fault in others versus keeping yourself responsible. So even if you've made mistakes, even if you've gone through a down time, what is the mistake you made? What did you learn from it? When you say, I did not get along with my boss, was it his problem, your problem? We're getting into a gray area. And clearly calling your boss as the villain, 100% also doesn't work because that person is not in the relation, in the conversation to justify. So it's easier to own up that problem saying, I could, have, I could have figured out how to make it work, but I didn't succeed. So I said, instead of fighting that losing battle, let me take a break and figure out if I can learn something new in management. So here I am, I am for my MBA interview. So I've shared with you, what to say and how to say, and also which are the red flags not to talk about.
you should you should own up that decision of taking a break and not be driven purely through circumstances unless you have a family reasons of financial you know constraints etc i was about just uh, with the my follow up question would have been the same that uh, uh, if your job was paying you well why did you leave your job and go along for mba so you answered that question already no so we can answer the question now the next a, a lot of them will say, mm-hmm. say this that i knew my career trajectory will take me to x from where i am so i wanted to have exponential growth or i wanted to explore other areas straight out of college with my it degree in electronics i joined programming but when i am working in this large company many many other departments fascinate me and there there are examples i can quote you i can bring them for subsequent maybe conversations where the person did a btech joined infosys from campus and said i want to explore a career in marketing but company would not give that opportunity so she said can i take a break spend two years and learn something about other functions and decide if it's still marketing it or what others so expanding your career horizon and investing in yourself to scale up learn new techniques is a, is a great reason thank you so much mr modgil for that answer so my next question will be like uh, often we say that we got into good colleges because of our 10th and 12th marks but uh due to maybe due to some reasons we don't perform as well as we were expected to and we uh, the recruiters often ask us that you did great in your 10th and 12th what was the reason why you couldn't outperform in your graduation so how should we answer that question again I, you know there are many many reasons right you could say i didn't work hard looking back i could have worked harder smarter my parents kept on telling me that i should study at least 2 hours a day and i did not look you have the opportunity because you're not in the moment you're reflecting back on a moment that's gone past so you can be slightly more sort of upfront about it right all of us know why didn't we do well because we had diversions you know diverting diverting attentions in our attentions which divert us from academics so many many reasons right so idea is to share those those real reasons and not hide about them I know friends who are very active in sports when when they were in uh, high school and school, and some of them have played up to state level, and then they realize that इससे तो कुछ बनने वाला नहीं है. If you play cricket, for example, unless you get a job with railways or you know some of those PSUs, you're not gonna be having a good successful career. I'm talking about pre-IPL days. So many of them realize that boss 10 plus 2 के बाद तो हम बन नहीं पाए अपने sports career में. Let me now focus on my engineering and get away and get a good job. so let me now park my alternate career as a musician as a sports person so many many reasons can happen you can have illness in the family you can there are many many reasons right you could be in a not a good school at that point in time many many but idea is to own up that experience and say look this is the real reason and i'm sure many of you will have conversations around this questions in the follow up session so please tell me your your own real story and we will try to discuss how to present this in the right way indeed uh, and from now in the last 15 minutes my dice is open for you all to uh, put in your questions go live talk share ask and make your story an impressive one and you have mr modgil to answer that question well so guys please you are ready to ask your questions all out Does or you can start by answering mm-hmm. saying what's the number one thing you find most difficult about these interviews academic interviews mba interviews because i'm sure all of us have gone through at least a few so far already so what's that one thing that you find the most difficult so let's 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 see if we can have question in that good evening sir good evening swacha yes sir nice to meet you again nice to meet you swacha so uh, like i wanted to share my story like if somebody would ask me why do you want to go for mba without having a career experience so uh, what if i say i want uh, till now in my bba i have studied like all the subjects but my i want to explore about marketing and operations more and i want to explore the knowledge go deep into the subject and then Uh, opt for 
like for a job so can i reframe it something better way in a better way that i can uh, like present myself because i am not doing a job be- especially because i don't think that uh, at this point of time i'll just be getting from the company and not contributing to the company i after going for my mba i'll be at a position to contribute to the company too and i'll be learning from industry professionals as well so something that you would like to say about it you've done a few internships right swetcha yes i've done a few internships uh, but uh, like uh, i think one month doesn't counts i have done a part part time job of one month i have done a uh, one month hr internship and i'm i have done six months hr internship in an ngo okay so the way to respond to that question uh, why do you want to do an mba straight after your uh, bba actually that question many of them will not ask you because that's the common practice right now in india where people just go after bachelors to mba but let's say this question comes to you and given your experience uh, so one thing not to say is that you could not have contributed with your mba that's one thing you should not say because that doesn't it's it it may be true in your view of the world but that's not true a lot of bachelors can contribute a lot to uh, companies they join so from a company contribution perspective of course a bachelors can still contribute of course a masters person will contribute more so I, you should say given the limited exposure i got in bba i feel i'll be more confident towards working in a company if i have a bigger exposure towards what options i have and if i have a deeper understanding of how companies operate and how can i contribute so that would be better uh, and you should say look there is you know you are a sum total of the opportunities you got so i went to a campus where i got a lot of, lot of academic inputs and i got some exposure so i worked for and you should bring that in i worked for a company for a month i did my internship for a few months with an ngo but i still feel that I, i i can do better if i have a better awareness of the opportunities and the scale at which companies operate so is it true that i can get that uh, uh, you know from from working for a couple of years and then joining an mba program possibly yes but is it also possible to get something like that while doing an mba with a program that you offer possibly so i'm evaluating my options bhai acche campus mila to is saal aa jayenge acche campus mein nahi hua to do saal kaam karenge fir apply karenge kya pareshani hai right so don't take the pressure and burden on you no 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 it's still it's an open market right you are not decided that you will be joining that campus if it's your value for, and isn't that true swetcha that if you did not get into good campus this year with your whatever score you have in cat would you like to try out next year or perhaps do it later the yes sir yes. definitely so you're not 100% signed up that are baba is saal to mujhko mba karna hi karna hai kuch bhi ho jaye aisa to nahi hai so that's that's what um, that's the way i would answer so hopefully i've answered your question in the right way i would not uh, yes you have less confidence because you're a bachelor's that you can't con- contribute but it is not generally true even at bachelor's you can contribute so i would not say so i would say you can contribute more i'll give another example that that will come to you so one way is to say here is a here is a watch for 100 rupees and there is a something a similar watch i have i'll give you at 20% discount the other is to say you have a i have a watch here for 100 rupees i'll give you something more along with that watch right so first one you're discounting which means you're degrading your value and the second one you're saying if you buy this watch i'll throw in a gift for you so second one is a better approach to take usually than to say i'll give you a discount discount meaning cheaper gift giving meaning you still holding the value of 100 rupees but i'm giving you something more so instead of saying i am not so sure if i can contribute as a bachelors you should say i know i can contribute more if i'm a masters okay sir so uh, so what if uh, like uh, i wanted actually i wanted to work for a company after my bachelors but my father was wanted me to like complete my study so i don't think i should say that or something no no it's polite to say look i'm inclined to also see if i can work as you rightly said why don't i work 
but i also have parental pressure you know that why don't you look at a full time career full time academic career uh, more vigorously and you know how parents are kuch baat baatein apni manni padti hain kuch parents ki manni padti hain so again you can have a light hearted moment and that's okay right because there's only so much you can push back your parents and we all understand that but but sometimes it comes like if you cannot convince your parents then uh, like there is some point once you so said you could say like, i yeah. can be stubborn at times and i can convince my parents but i am also respectable respect i also respect them and i want to consider their opinion and give them a good thought so if you're telling me if they're telling me to join a full time program look uh, swetcha what does the campus want you to do join them full time program right now <laughs> आपके जो बिलिंग साइकिल है जो आपको पेमेंट उनको आप पैसे दोगे तो जुलाई से दोगे ना व्हाई वुड दे लाइक टू हैव यू 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 इयर्स लेटर दे जस्ट आउट वेदर आर सीरियस अबाउट एमबीए एंड बाय द वे दिस क्वेश्चन यूजुअली अराइज व्हाई Thank you so much sir. You welcome Swetcha. So so we have a follow up questions from question from Simran Batra that is she wanted to ask that she hasn't have any internship experience uh, during her graduation time so will it stand as a disadvantage in her profile? Is she online can you go live on your video Simran and ask this question because this is also part of your learning how to switch on your camera and be on camera and uh, imagine if this is the interview interaction are you there online let's give it a few seconds some network issue sorry so guys when you are appearing for your mba interview <laughs> you know what you have to do <laughs> lights camera action it's a complete performance because uh, you cannot be in an audio only for the interview anyway so let's address that question for simran uh, no it would not be a disadvantage uh, to you but it does definitely give an advantage if you've done few internships because then your answers are a better in terms of alignment with what the industry experience is but we also understand that 90% 80% 90% of uh, uh, undergrads in india will have zero internship experience unless you're from a metro and in the metro cities of india that's more prevalent getting internship interview uh, internship experience while you're doing your bachelor's but it's not a big deal uh you could also say so that i wish i had gone through some internships in my ug but that did not happen so i have a lot of academic understanding of my subjects or a decent un- academic in- sub- understanding of my subject but i believe uh, an mba will give me the practical experience also that i can apply when when i'm going for your, for my employment so that's the way to address that part uh is it a big disadvantage no but is it a, a small advantage if others have a Uh, internship experience absolutely they do have an advantage yes these days internship do play an important role so any other questions that you have guys uh, last 5 minutes for you all to ask all your questions out there especially if you've done a bba program manvi on that last question if you've done a bba and no internship and then you're applying for a uh mba or if you've done a btech program for 4 years and you've got no internship experience then it's a slightly deeper handicap so she says that she's pursuing bfia i okay what what does that mean bfia anyone so you got to expand that for us uh, simran bfia please Ah, financial investment analysis. Okay, there's so many new programs coming up. Almost every academic year, it's very difficult to keep a track. Uh, yeah, this one you you should have had an internship if you ask me, uh, because it seems like a more vocational program with functional skills you can apply. So yeah, this could have been one place where you could have had some internship experience, but it's okay. I mean, most of us when we hire students from UG. we know that it's very unlikely that we'll get students who will have uh, i i would even not say 10% of ug students have internship experience i would say all up in india it would be less than 2 3% right now 
which is actually a shame because even bachelors you could have had good summer internships and learned something it doesn't matter if you're doing your bachelors in arts or commerce or or sciences or bba but that's where that's the reality so any other questions good evening sir good evening ma'am this sir this is my second session with you and i cannot thank you enough for all these knowledgeable sessions that you are holding i mean each answer of yours or should i put it as each approach to the answers of yours is spot on and there are great learnings from these sessions sir and you are making these interviews feel like more of an experience and less of a phobia so thank you so much thank you mansi for your kind word that exactly is my idea that the more you create it like a hawa on yourself the more you will weigh down and you'll get nervous so the idea is to let go of the nervous energy when you're there and have a maybe maybe a conversation if you try to have it as a conversation it's easier for all of us uh and it, if you look at it like a one way traffic and they're out to get you if that's your mentality then you have lot more undue stress on yourself but is there a question you have mansi yes so you asked that what are the most difficult part of the interviews for all of us so for me is to answer um, engine uh, questions uh, pertaining to engineering subjects because it's been 2 to 2.5 years that i have done with my btech and i'm not confident on my engineering subjects so if for one or two answers for one or two questions i can answer that uh, i am out of touch uh because of these subjects but for every following question if i answer the same it would be a red flag so how to tackle that mansi that's a great question i was asked this question earlier also in a session for mba students preparing for mba admissions this year actually and that's a very good question because there could be professors in that board who are very good in one subject uh and for example if you said you done your bachelor in arts and or some other subject and you had economics and you could have a eco professor on the board that person can can actually ask you some question to find out if you're lying about your cad score or how much of depth you have and it's very very uh, done to say answer if you know the answer don't try to fudge it don't try to be smart about your answer so you could say look you know what you got me on the spot because i've i've read nine courses in 3 years with some 3000 pages but let me see if i can remember it right and come back to you and those could be very basic questions that you should know but that's okay if you if you know it say so but don't try to do intelligent guessing you can ask that question back saying do i understand that if you're asking me about keynesian economics is that the question what is keynesian you can qualify the question but once the per, 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 once you're sure about the question unless you have a definitive answer at least at the top level do not try to make smart guesses because we can figure it out from your body language from the answer so it's good to say oh i i don't remember i don't remember now because it's been some time i i i didn't realize i'll be asked questions on eco in this interview but i'm sorry i i don't know the answer right now that's okay uh which does mean you're signaling signaling to the other person that they should ask the follow up question the moment you give a wrong kluji answer ke ghuma diya bahut sare interview techniques mein aapko pata hai ghuma do usko aap ghumaoge those guys are masters in doing interviews right so it's good to say look i do not remember that's okay sir if i uh, give this answer on like two to three questions that sir uh, humbly speaking i don't remember uh, what if they backfired me with a question like you are coming for this interview don't you think you should have come prepared with at least the engineering subjects so how should i tackle it then uh, there are many ways you can answer that question let me try few approaches with you right so when you just say i wish i had known that i have to prepare because i've gone through how many subjects in 4 years of engineering would you take how many papers mansi total at least 35 more than 35 exactly so you should say look i have 35 courses i have to appear for and i wish i had known that i'll be asked interview questions on those Uh, i am not ready for that so my apologies i am not ready for it that's a very very polite way of asking that question the more the more extreme version of the answer of the question is to say look to be honest i joined engineering because my parents wanted me to join engineering and i was very young and i realized it's not my gig 
Okay. So here I am about to make my first independent adult choice. So if you support me, I'll go with that. If you're going to ask me why didn't I do in, in engineering well, you know what? I wouldn't have been coming for an MBA. Perhaps I would have, if, you, if I'd liked my subject so much, perhaps I would have gone and worked for a company. This is, I mean, if you really want to take somebody on, somebody who was poking you again and again on an interview question on the same subject, you could say, look, to be honest, sir, with all humility, <laughs> it is not my choice. <laughs> And then you could rewind and play that back in them. That's like the Amog Shastra. It's more radical as an, but first one is to respond back saying, if you gave me five questions, I should be able to address two or three of them. Because that's my marks also in my, if you see my academic score, I'm at 60% of my marks. So, <laughs> question ga, che ka jawab mil jayega. But anyway, you can play multiple approaches, but never hide or try to hide because the, the number one mistake people do when they don't know, know the question or the answer, they try to fudge it. Once you try to fudge it, there's no coming back from that mess. <laughs> Mansi, I hope uh, Mr. Modgil an answered your question well. So uh, any other questions, guys, or we have do have a lucky winners for our mock trial interviews that we'll be sharing later on with you all. So if you have any other follow up questions, or uh, we should call it a day as we are all already running out of time. Mr. Modgil, what do you suggest? Should we call it a day or wait for a few couple of minutes? I think I think we're done. I think most of the questions we've answered anyway. Let's find out from them later on if they found this useful. Uh, the mock interviews is a good idea. I think there is some X number of uh, lucky winners from this uh, particular uh, program that Mansi will pick. What are the criteria for her? I do not know, but I'll let her decide on that. A mock interview is a good idea because it'll help you perfect your own story and calibrate it well. It's like going to a net session before practice session before you go to the test match. So the more you can practice and the more you can do it, not in your head, but a volley of conversational sort of uh, interviews between your friends, that'll be useful. You may want to select your toughest friends who always give you grief <laughs> to play that tough <laughs> one. So the more you can uh, plan it and don't do it on a phone call, please, because your interview will be looking into this tiny little but buttonhole camera. So the more you can practice your best view and you know your sound and visual broadband connectivity. For example, Manvi is conducting this on a Reliance Geo connect, uh, Ford, Reliance Geo connection, right? 4G connection, and we could see she was having yes. some yes. broadband issues on her wife on her mobile phone 4G. So I would recommend book a nice uh, business center for your interview. Have power backups. Have one more. A geofi a router with you so practice a lot more the more you practice the more natural you'll be when it comes to facing a camera and doing a live interaction on video so mock interviews are very very crucial before you go for the for the final one and mind you if even if i have professionals who have worked for 10 12 years in companies and then they're switching companies or they're looking for interviews we all do mock interviews before we get selected for the final interview Mock is a very, very big tool. With that, I think we are done. And uh, I wish you all the best for your MBA journey when you join in July, wherever you join and do join us. And we may do such more sessions uh, in the next following weeks. So Manvi will keep in touch. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Mr. Modgil, for joining in and sharing all your industry insights and on how to answer the very basic questions that we often get confused about or we hesitate to answer in a proper manner so as to impress the interviewer. So thank you so much once again to everyone for joining us in. And we shall see you soon with uh, lots of follow-up sessions alongside. So have a great evening ahead, guys. Thank you so much.